Hey everybody, hope you guys are healthy and safe. So you're watching main camera footage. Shout the Xiaomi 12T Pro. And I am in Munich, Germany right now for the launch of the phone. So initially, I wanted to film the bulk of this video in location in Munich. But I can't do that now because on my way here from Hong Kong, the airlines lost my luggage. The luggage had my camera, tripod, gimbal, and microphone. So that means now I don't have the gear I need to film unless I film something like this, like a handheld video using just the onboard microphone. And yeah, I know I shouldn't have put my camera into a checked bag. I usually would not, but I didn't have any room in my carry on this trip. So it's pretty packed. But yeah, the Xiaomi 12T Pro, I think most of you guys know the main selling point of this phone. It has a 200 megapixel camera is one of the first phones in the world to use this sensor. Now, the 200 megapixel camera doesn't really come into play right now for shooting videos, but it comes into play for shooting still photos because it allows the 12T Pro to shoot multiple kinds of photos. You can either shoot a pixel bin photo using 200 megapixels worth of data, or you can shoot a normal 200 megapixel photo that allows you to crop in a lot more. Now, most of you guys probably know about pixel binning already, but I'll just explain really quick here. It's a software trick that will combine multiple pixels worth of image information into one super pixel, so to speak. The idea is that each pixel packs more image information, which improves dynamic range, colors, details, sharpness, all that. Pixel binning is not new. While I started doing it first with the Mate 20, and then Samsung and Xiaomi quickly jumped on board a year later. And then this year, even Apple jumped on board with the iPhone 14 Pro. The iPhone 14 Pro has a 48 megapixel main camera that's mainly used to shoot 12 megapixel photos. So the iPhone is doing four in one binning, 48 into 12. Samsung does nine in one binning. It uses a 108 megapixel camera to bin down to a 12 megapixel shot. Guess what Xiaomi is doing with the 12T Pro? It's doing 16 in one binning. The 200 megapixel camera produces a 12.5 megapixel shot. You know, 200 divided by 16 is 12.5. That means a photo taken by the Xiaomi 12T Pro has 16 times more image information than a typical 12 megapixel photo. So that's the first and major benefit of the 200 megapixel sensor. It allows you to do crazy binning. The second benefit is Xiaomi actually can crop into such a large sensor to get an optical lossless two times zoom. Apple's doing the same trick too with the iPhone 14 Pro, but instead of cropping to 48 megapixels, the 12T Pro is cropping into 200 megapixels. The third benefit is you can shoot in full 200 megapixel resolution if you want. The file size of the picture will be huge. I'm talking about like almost 50 megabytes per photo. But the benefit is you can now crop into the photo much further than you usually could with a smartphone photo. Now there are a couple of caveats if you want to shoot in full 200 megapixel mode. The first is you need really, really good lighting. If you shoot in poor lighting like at night, the details are going to be quite soft when you crop all the way in. So for the most part, you are better off just shooting in 12.5 megapixels. But it is useful knowing that if you have good lighting, let's say you're outside on a sunny day, you can shoot in 200 megapixel mode and get an image that you can bring it back to your computer screen and blow up all the way and zoom in all the way and still get relatively good details. It also helps a lot that Xiaomi is using a relatively large 1 over 1.2 inch image sensor because with so many pixels, you do need more light. And 1 over 1.2 inch is a relatively large image sensor. I would say it's larger than 80% of the flagship cameras out there. But of course, it still falls short to the main camera of the 12S Ultra. So the other two cameras on this top tier is the main camera. You have an 8 megapixel ultra wide camera that still grabs surprisingly good photos if you have good lighting and video performance is pretty good too. But when you use it at night, photos do come out a little bit soft on details and a little bit noisy. But if you have good daylight, you can get some good sleeping landscape shots. Unfortunately, the third camera is just a 2 megapixel macro lens. Oh, and the selfie camera is a 20 megapixel selfie camera in a hole punch and it gets the job done. Now the good news is that Xiaomi is not selling the 12T Pro at a really high price. I actually do not have official pricing of this phone at the time of me making this video, but there are very reliable rumors that say this phone will retail for around 750 euros, which is 750 US dollars. I think this is a pretty fair price because the rest of the construction and components are premium. You have the typical glass and aluminum construction. You have a 6.7 inch 120 hertz OLED panel, now, this is not an LTPO 2.0 panel, meaning the refresh rate cannot get as low as 1Hz, but it can get as low as 30Hz. 
and you have the option to jump between 30, 50, 60, 90, and 120 hertz. So that's enough to save battery life. Not that you would really need to worry about battery life too much because there's a 5,000 milliamp hour battery in here and there's a 120 watt charging brick included with the package. I think a lot of people are also going to like that this is a flat screen. I actually like curved screens, but I know there are a lot of you guys out there who prefer flat screens, so this one's for you. Whether we're talking about animations, colors, viewing angles, contrast, this is a really good looking panel and I don't have much to complain about except maximum screen brightness is 500 nits normally and up to 900 nits of peak brightness. That's still pretty good, but you know, not as good as a Xiaomi 12S Ultra screen or iPhone 14 Pro Max screen. You have a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 inside with either 8 or 12 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM. 128 or 256 gigs of UFS 3.1 storage. You also have stereo speakers tuned by Harman Kardon. As far as moving from Brooklyn to, to the 76ers and this, and you can't do that anymore. And excellent haptics, which we've come to expect from Xiaomi phones. So like I said, other than the underwhelming two megapixel macro sensor, oh, and I guess the lack of wireless charging and an official IP rating, the rest of the package is pretty much tip-top flagship quality. On the software front, the phone runs Android 12 with MIUI 13 on top. MIUI is not everybody's cup of tea, but I quite like it. I think animations in MIUI is really fluid and whimsical. I like that when you delete an app, the app kind of explodes, and then you see apps on the side get pushed back a little bit as if they were like affected by the shockwave of the explosion. So it's little touches like that that makes the UI feel alive. I do think Xiaomi's settings panel is still way too overly complicated. They have three separate panels just for display stuff. Okay, now let's go back to the cameras. I'm going to show you more photo samples. I think you can see that for the most part, this camera captures really good images, whether it's day or night. I think Xiaomi's uh, night mode and software processing has gotten really good, particularly now that they have 200 megapixels worth of data to play with. If you take a look at these photo samples side by side against the iPhone 14 Pro, I think the Xiaomi 12T Pro keeps up very well. It comes down to a matter of preference. And because the image sensor size is still pretty large, you still get some nice creamy natural bokeh. But of course, it can't compare to the Xiaomi 12S Ultra. The two times digital zoom actually looks pretty good because it is an in-sensor crop of the 200 megapixel, so it's almost optical lossless quality. Video performance is satisfactory. If you shoot with the main camera during the day, you get pretty good stabilization, but at night, there's a lot of that micro jitter and wobble with every step that I take. That's about the case with most Android phones. I've been spoiled by the iPhone 14 Pro's video camera, which has the best in class stabilization I've ever seen. But for the most part, video performance here is pretty good. You can shoot all the way up to 8K resolution, but don't bother with that. Just stick with 4K 30. Now the selfie camera still cannot shoot at 4K resolution. It maxes out at 1080p. To be honest, I'm okay with that, but a lot of you guys seem to want 4K videos for front-facing cameras and other phones do offer that. So that is a shortcoming here. I'm also a fan of all the various camera modes that Xiaomi offers. Some of these are not new, like clone photo and video. They've been around for years, but I still think they're very fun to play with. Likewise, with the AI Sky Editor, I think you can actually do quite a good job of making a photo look kind of convincing, even though you just added like a fake sky to the background. One of the new shooting modes is cinematic portraits, which adds some stylized lens flare to your portraits. Now, I actually quite like playing with them. If you can see here, I snap the portrait shot by itself. It looks kind of boring, looks a little bit bland, but then I jump into cinematic portraits, added some filters, and then I jumped into settings, played around the dials a little bit. The end result is a pretty moody retro portrait that I quite like. I think this phone's portrait capabilities are pretty good as you can see from these samples here. Ultimately, if you're considering the Xiaomi 12T Pro, it is gonna be for that 200 megapixel camera. I think it does a good job and it does bring something new to the industry. For example, in Hong Kong, there's a lot of stores with a lot of stuff laid out. And you know, Hong Kong people can be quite rude, so I don't want to stand in front of the store to snap a bunch of photos because sometimes they will actually yell at you. So with a 200 megapixel sensor, I can shoot a 200 megapixel image, walk away, and then go home later, put the image on a larger monitor, and I can see all the details of the stuff in that store. Because with a 200 megapixel shot, you can really pixel peep and look at all the details. Now, once again, the catch is you do need really good lighting for that. So this is only something I can do on a sunny day. At night, 
wouldn't be able to do this. Now, is the 12T Pro a better phone than the 12S Ultra? No, this is still clearly higher in the pecking order, but I think the 12T Pro is a really good base level flagship. And for the price, I think you're getting quite a lot for the phone. And then of course, for a lot of you guys, you can't buy the 12S Ultra anyway because it's not selling internationally, but this one is. So yeah, that's about it for this video. If you enjoyed this content, please subscribe to my channel. I have a lot more stuff coming as usual. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching.